Okay, so also with these, uh, as the complications go, and welcome back, as these complications get worse and worse, you know, he's fighting like, uh, you know, sea nymphs and overcoming them. And you don't fight them, but you overcome them. Uh, you know, they like try to drown your men and stuff. And one of his men gets drowned by them. Uh, he overcomes a huge sea storm, uh, giant octopus flying crazy things with faces. Anyway, and then he finally gets here. Where all seems lost. Boats, boats broken. It's leaking. He has to let go of all these crabs. Oh man, there goes my money. And everything just seems hopeless and lost. The boat doesn't even seem like it's going to be able to make it. And, and on top of all of that, there's a big freaking wall blocking his way with gigantic statues. And he can't pass. He can't get the women home. Women don't know why the wall's, wall's up. It's always open. Uh, but now it's closed. It, the only time it's ever it's ever been closed was to protect them and keep their enemies out. Uh, so maybe he's you know he kind of feels like, what if I'm being seen as an enemy? But he doesn't know why it's closed, so he swims out there. So now it's like, give it your all. If this was a romantic comedy, as I said before, or a romance in any way, this is when the girl, the guy, finds out the other one's been lying to them, or hiding something from them, you know, doing something that makes them break up. And then the other person that was broke up with gives it their all, you know, and then by the climax, they get back together again. So he, uh, you know, swims out there, gives it his all tries to figure out how to get past the wall. Um, they tell him love is the answer. He gets back uh, into the boat, finally tells her about his um, dead wife, and they make love, and then the door is open. And now that's the climax. It's over. And then now we're here at the end, aftermath. And so we already went through that. We know what the aftermath is. So there you go. And that's what climax is. That's the end of the battle. Then you have your aftermath. Now let's go ahead and get started, and um, I'm going to create a story live here in front of you. I already have a lot of my story figured out, um, but I haven't gone through this process with my story yet. I have only just been outlining, come up with little ideas as I've, as I've been sketching my characters and stuff. Um, so uh, I, the reason why I haven't really gone through this part of this the, of it yet is because um, I'm still working on my fourth novel. I haven't quite finished it yet. Uh, I'm almost done with it. And then uh, once I finish it, I'll, I was going to go through this. But I'm going to go through it now with you live here. So here it goes. So the first thing I need is a main character, and I decided um, my main character is going to be a female. I like writing female protagonists. So far, um, just about all my novels have been female protagonists, the main character. My first novel was a female, 17-year-old. My second novel was a split narration between male and female. Uh, then my third novel was was um, a Gija, my sci-fi novel, main character was a male. Uh, yeah, well, actually, both main characters. The, well, there's a main character. I told, it was a split point of view. I told it from the main character's point of view and some scenes from the enemy's point of view, but both were male. And then uh, my romance novel is a single point of view, Zoe, which is female. Anyway, so this one I decided my fifth novel, too, would be a female main character. I might even write it as split point of view. I don't know yet. I have to kind of work all this out to figure out what would be the best point of view to tell whether it's multiple point of view or one point of view. It's definitely going to be third person, though. There's no doubt about that. So I have my main character, and she's a female, and she's an elf. And in relation to human years, she's like a teenager. So she hasn't quite fully matured yet. So, And she's a late bloomer, so she hasn't quite... Uh, all of her friends and stuff have matured, but she hasn't. And so uh, one of the things I decided is that my elves have really long ears, like on World of Warcraft, those elves that have really long ears, like that, and um, they stick out sideways, though, like straight out <laughs> on the side of your head, like little arms growing off the side of your head, but, you know, ears, like little antenna or something. And uh, when you mature, they fold back and move back with your head. So that's why I decided, and I decided I need to right away in my setup and so sometimes I think about this as I'm doing this. Um, and so I knew in my setup here, I need to build sympathy for her. So I started actually thinking about that right away. And I decided that to build sympathy for her is that they all make fun of her uh, because they're all matured and she's not. And her best friend, you know, always like doesn't doesn't have the guts to, like totally stick up for her. But it's like, don't worry about it. You know, you're going to mature soon enough. Anyway, so they make fun of her and they call her pointy. You know, or they either call her pointy or outy, referring to her ears. 
because they, they, they're still pointing out and like, haha, you're still a little girl. When are you ever going to mature? And another thing is, is I, I, I decided uh, one of her weaknesses is that she's afraid to use her power. And this actually came to me after I had designed a lot of characters and stuff. Then I decided I'm going to have different elemental elves. And because I, I don't like using creatures from other people's stories, so I, you know, elf, they're only elves because they have like these big ears. But other than that, they're not really elves. A lot of the, a lot of how they act, what they do aren't really elves um, or elf like. I mean, they live a long time. So there's some elf aspects there, but I added my own and that is their elemental elves. So her tribe are lightning elves and they have the power to um, create lightning by sucking the electrons out of things around them, like out of trees and out of living things around them. And, and she doesn't like having to drain things of their life force because like the electrons are like the life force of everything. And she doesn't like to drain energy from the things around her, from, from living things around her, even if they are just trees and they have plenty to spare. She doesn't like doing that. And so, and she's also kind of scared of her power um, when she really starts feeling it. Uh, she's scared of it. She feels like she can't control it or like something bad will happen. And they kind of make fun of her for that too. And I already thought of this one scene where they're doing lightning practice where they transform their whole body temporarily into lightning and they zap through an object. And so they all run at this tree and they zap through the tree. So they run, they jump in the air, turn to lightning, and then zap through the tree, leaving like a little mark in the tree, and then they turn back to their elf form on the other side after they've zapped through the tree. She runs, jumps in the air, you know, gets too scared, tries to zap and and slams head first into the tree. And, you know, they all laugh and make fun of her. So um, all, all of this, I think of all this stuff as I'm developing my story. So I, I know a lot about my main character kind of, you know, that they're lightning elves. She's a lightning elf and uh, they have lightning capacitors. So uh, this is all kind of stuff. And, and so I'm doing a little bit of world building now. And, and this is how you develop your you develop your story. This is how you use this guide. And also you have a goal. So I, I need a goal for her. And it's good to know your goal and, you know, your desire goal relationship right from the beginning before you start going. So I need to think what that's going to be. But anyway, with the with the lightning the lightning elf thing. So uh, so really quick before I do that, I wanted to go back into the lightning capacitors. So they have these lightning capacitors or lightning transistors or um, whatever it is that stores electricity. I can't remember what those are called, but whatever that is, uh, I'll, I'll look it up. But that's what they, they 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 have these like glass tubes, these glass containers that contain lightning. And so what they do is. Uh, they have, you know, they, they, what they do for work is they, you know, what's one of her jobs is she fills up these lightning capacitors, containers, and it's pretty much every everyone can do this and does this, and so she's filling up these uh, lightning capacitors, but she's not very good at it, so she's running behind because she's not very good at controlling lightning and everything, and filling them up, and she's kind of scared to even do it, but she has to like fill her quota, and so her friends like, come on, you can do that later, and so that just kind of helps set up, set up the world. That is, I'm setting up the world. You know, this this all happens in the first you know 10%. All these things I've mentioned so far. So I'm setting up the world. I'm setting up my main character. I'm building sympathy for her. Also because she's an elf and and this is on another planet. There's nothing for humans to relate to. So I need to give things that humans can relate to because there's no human characters. So I've I've decided to you know build off human sympathy and empathy. That is they can relate to her. Like oh I've I've been there before. I've been made fun of or whatever you know. So I'm using more than one way to draw them in to the main character and, and into the world and using a lot of things that seem common but different to like the lightning transistors whatever and that and they use these like like we use kind of like we use electricity so they kind of have technology they sort of have light bulbs and stuff like that but it's gonna be a lot different too so then i needed i need i need to um decide my desire and my goal and so i know that she has a need that one of her needs is since she's She's, she needs courage. She's too shy to stick up for herself. So all these people pick on her. And notice that one other thing is you want these to be linked together. One leads to the other. So it should it should be organic. And I'm, I'm not going to say that word a bunch, a bunch of times this time around. But one thing leads to the next. So if, if she has this weakness, and one of her weaknesses is that she hasn't fully developed yet, that's a weakness in this story. It might not be a weakness in general, but it's a weakness in this story. And it's something that she wants to overcome. All right, so we'll go ahead and continue this on the next part. So please come back. And if you would, in the description there, just click on the link for...
the uh, master edit. Check it out. I think you'll I think you'll like it.